Save a dollar on all varieties of pretty lady grapes, only $3.99 per pound. Fresh boneless sirloin pork chops, $3.99 per pound. Super Slopper, Superbug Insect Spray, 430 milliliter tin, only $3.99. Regular Diet Coca-Cola Soda, six-pack tins, only $6.49. Yo Play Yogurt, six-ounce tubs, only $1.09. All stores open Monday through Saturday from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. and Sunday, 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. for your shopping convenience. You can count on us. Live from Bermuda Broadcasting, this is ZBN TV 9 News. Good evening, everyone. It's Wednesday, October 18th, 2017. I'm Jasmine Patterson, and thanks for joining us tonight. New information coming to light in the situation involving the now former pastor of a well-known church and who was a leading figure in the preserved marriage movement. Well, place sources telling Bermuda Broadcasting News, it is alleged the embattled preacher was found to have begun a relationship with reportedly a male church member while that person was still a minor and which continued after that church member became an adult. It is understood once knowledge of this came to the fore, the pastor was asked to resign. The matter has now caused a firestorm on social media, with both criticism and words of encouragement being expressed. Attempts to reach the pastor in question have so far proven futile, as of those to reach the church in question, whose offices, were told, remained closed today. In other news, police say foul play is not suspected in the case of a 63-year-old man who died at an Eastdale Lane home in Southampton. The report went to emergency responders at 7.35 Tuesday night, where the man was found in an unresponsive state. He was later pronounced dead at the scene by a doctor. Police plan to release the, main, the man's name in due course, pending notification of the next of kin. Well, relief for students and staff at the Prospect Preschool as remedial work has begun on a number of issues affecting the school, including a mold problem which was said to be negatively impacting at least one member of staff. Gary Moreno reported on the situation first and tells us more in this follow-up report. Of all the issues affecting the school, the mold problem is perhaps the most concerning. And to deal with that, extensive cleaning has been carried out in the affected areas with air scrubbers installed to perform clearance testing. One of the affected rooms was a staff room which also doubles as a kitchen in which the plaster on the walls had to be removed in some areas to get at the mold underneath. Other rooms were painted after the damage caused by water was corrected. However, the mold on the ceiling in some areas remains to be dealt with. We have been assured though the work to remedy that situation is ongoing. And it turns out the school does not have a feral cat problem. The animals are part of a community project with which Prospect Preschool is involved and are considered school pets, which we were told are regularly treated by veterinarians to ensure that they remain healthy and safe for the children to play with. The bird problem, however, remains. Evidence of that was clearly visible and we're told efforts to rectify that situation remain in place, but it could be a while before it is eradicated. Of more concern to the students, though, is the fact that they were once again able to use their playground from Tuesday of this week. Workers from the Parks Department cut back all the overgrown vegetation, thereby making it safer for students as they are now no longer hidden from view during playtime. The perimeter fence bordering the playground has also been repaired, with new chain-link fencing installed, not only providing an additional level of safety for the students, but also in the hope that it will keep out individuals who use the playground for purposes other than which it was intended, including consumption of alcohol and encounters of an intimate kind, evidence of which was strewn all over the area when we first visited back in September. The surface beneath the play equipment, which became compacted and solid after having not been tended to for an extensive period, has once again been deemed safe, much to the light, we are told, of the students. However, there is still some work to be done as a popular swing set is in need of repairs, with the bolts and plates holding the chains in place extremely corroded. Elsewhere, a spokesperson for the Ministry of Education gave us the assurance that any outstanding issues will be dealt with, but this will happen in order of priority with the more significant ones like the mold topping the list. Gary Moreno, reporting for the Bermuda Broadcasting News. Attorney General and Minister of Legal Affairs Kathy Simmons told those in the upper house today that she will be looking to make changes within her department. Here's Mike Sharp with the details. 
The government leader in the Senate said the move will ensure young Bermudians complete their legal training in the Attorney General's chambers and then work privately or remain in the chambers. I did a, a statement earlier on outsourcing of legal services and the cost to the government for that outsourcing, which is immense. Um, I haven't done a comparative analysis across successive administrations, but anything that is in the millions of dollars is of concern. Now, there are instances where, because of the complexity of the legal issues, we need to outsource. There are other instances where we may not have the um, quota of counsel available to attend to a certain matter, so outsourcing will probably always exist to some extent, but the inordinate amount of money that we're spending on it is not justifiable. So what we're trying to do is build our resources, increase um, the breadth of experience that we give our in-house counsel now, and also make sure that we make a way for the youngsters to come through, which is actually important in terms of our platform to increase apprenticeships and internships. But that's, that's an ongoing issue which the public will see um, being rolled out in time, but with some urgency. Seems dear to your heart. It's dear to my heart because I see parents sacrificing a lot of time, energy, and finances to educate their children. And I feel that young people need to have an opportunity in their countries. And so this is something, I mean, I have young boys who are being educated, and I would like to think that there is a place for them in their country, a place earned but available. Mm -hmm. So yes, it is dear to me. And I'm Mike Sharp with Bermuda Broadcasting News. Sears is Bermuda's largest home appliance store with over 200 appliances in our showroom. We have refrigerators and freezers, gas ovens and electric ranges, washers and dryers. Sears has a wide selection of craftsmen's tools and accessories. Beautify your home with our lawn and garden tools. We have everything you need for outdoor entertaining. Located at 41 Victoria Street, Sears is open Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. Sears, reliable delivery, quality service and everyday low prices. When you shop online, the cheapest, quickest, and easiest way to bring your packages into Bermuda is with U.S. Express at Mailboxes. And there are things that you can't ship to Bermuda sometimes, especially IT equipment and things like that. It's just easy to put in a U.S. address, and it just gets there every time. Uh, they notify me immediately when the packages show up. If they need an invoice, I send it to them. But when I show up here, it's ready to go. Sign up for a U.S. Express account at www.mailboxesunlimited.com today. If you're looking for extra savings and free benefits with car insurance and home insurance, Colonial has just the cover you need. There's a free $250 gift voucher for new home insurance customers, too, and 10% car insurance discount if you have home insurance. With a claim service that's quick and friendly, we call it Cover Without Added Costs. Call for a quote on 296-3700 or visit cgigroup.com. Colonial, where people come first. Bermuda's Gang Violence Reduction Coordinator, Pastor Leroy Bean, will address a forum this Saturday hosted by Visions, the anti-violence network focusing on at-risk youths in high schools. Organizer Desmond Crockwell telling us there will be speakers, Pastor Jakimo Smith of Mount Zion Church, Barclay Institute Counselor Tyrone McCarty, plus testimonials on the situation. The objective is for us to really, really promote the support groups um, so we can, re when we do approach our young people, um, those that are at risk, um, we want to make sure that we have some sort of support system in place or some sort of support, support organizations and programs in place. So they also have to know where they want to go if they need help um, because we do believe and we have said it from the beginning that it was take a community in order to help our young people. I believe that when it comes to his involvement in the um, strategy of um, eradicating the, the, the gay mentality. I believe that um, he is very knowledgeable, you know, and he man knows what he's talking about, and I believe that that's a good move forward for um, anyone to, to actually seek his advice or his knowledge when it comes to, um, you know, the formation of gangs and the activity that's going on. As a community person, and he is very knowledgeable in the um, strategic um, way of forward. Once again, that event takes place at the Crawl Gospel Hall on Saturday, October 21st from 7 p.m. Residents are being warned to be extra careful when using public Wi-Fi networks to access the Internet. It comes as the Ministry of National Security warns of a detected weakness in a security measure on which Wi-Fi devices use and which has put Internet devices at risk of attack. 
The web attack is called the Key Reinstallation Attack, or CRACK, and can allow a hacker within range of a Wi-Fi network to gain access to unencrypted traffic sent online. Government Cybersecurity Working Group says there are precautions the public can take to avoid becoming a victim. They include ensuring your devices remain up to date, as it may take months for fixes to be available. Also, where possible, you are advised to plug devices into a wired network instead of using Wi-Fi. You should ensure web addresses start with HTTPS and display the lock symbol when transmitting data containing personal information such as credit cards. Also, residents are advised to consider turning off Wi-Fi when not in use. This includes appliances, webcams, TV sets, and baby monitors. Corporate Wi-Fi administrators are encouraged to follow best industry standards and guidelines and to check Wi-Fi intrusion routes. Tarai Trot reporting for Bermuda Broadcasting News. Cloudy and breezy conditions will remain in place this evening with a rapid increase of shower activity expected earlier tomorrow. Let's go to the AccuWeather headquarters for the details. AccuWeather is presented by BFNM Insurance Group. We now go to AccuWeather headquarters. Tonight's forecast is brought to you by the BFNM Insurance Group. I'm Shanae Shocker. Take a look at our satellite. What we're seeing here is some heavy cloud cover just off towards our south. We did see a cold front pass through. That's what's been in charge of our breezier weather for today and what's going to continue into tomorrow. Along with the cloud cover, some spotty showers here. You can see some that are going to filter in throughout tonight and that's going to continue into tomorrow. We'll get to that in just a second. But as far as our current conditions go, temperatures across the island sitting at 77 degrees. Humidity also at 77. Our winds, once again, they're a little bit high out of the northeast, 18 to 22 knots. Waves inside the reef aren't too bad, though, one to two feet outside. However, we are still continuing to see some pretty choppy water out there, five to eight feet for you. For tonight, we're going to remain mostly cloudy. We'll see a couple of showers pass through the area, not talking any downpours, however, 74 degrees for our low. Now we work our way into tomorrow, and what we're seeing here is uh, some deep moisture that's going to be pulled up along the frontal system into tomorrow. So we're going to start to see increasing showers as the day goes on, and even the possibility of a thunderstorm for your Thursday. We're looking at a high of 79 degrees, low once again going to sit around 74 for us on our Thursday. As far as our tides go, we'll have our next high tide tonight just before 840 this evening. Tomorrow morning's low tide at 238. And we'll see our next high tide for tomorrow at just before 9 o'clock Thursday morning. All right, so now as we head forward, we're looking at uh, our gateway forecast here. 69 degrees into Toronto, plenty of sunshine, big area of high pressure behind this front that's affecting us right now. That's bringing beautiful weather into New York. Boston, as well as out towards Atlanta. Lingering tail end of that front is going to continue to bring some spotty pop-up thunderstorms during the day into Miami. Out towards London, however, we're looking at some rainy weather. Jamaica, Barbados, and Trinidad all seen those uh, passing uh, showers as well as we continue to watch a tropical wave move through the area. A look at your extended forecast shows the wet weather once again on Thursday. We're going to warm up to 80 degrees for our high come Friday. Friday. End of the weekend, though, things cool off. We start to see uh, less chance of, of a shower here. 78 degrees for our high. That's going to stay the case as we head into our Monday as well. Make sure you stay up to date with all your weather news and forecasts by tuning into your local radio stations, Ocean 89, Power 80, 95, and Inspire 105. AccuWeather was presented by BFNM Insurance Group.
Island Sole, where fashion meets comfort. Island Sole provides fashionable footwear hand-selected by our podiatrist that offers premium comfort. Located at 60 Victoria Street, Hamilton, Island Soul contains a friendly trained staff prepared to assist you with our vast selection of footwear, both male and female, with all sizes and widths available. Compression and travel socks, amongst other accessories, are also available in addition to a shoe modification and repair service, making Island Soul a one-stop shop for all your footwear needs. Just receiving a message from our Earl based and in the latest from Haiti is that Bermuda's under night, sorry, 17 national football team are leading Jamaica 3-1 in the second half. Earl Basin will have the full details in the morning sports radio cast. Now let's join Earl with tonight's sports report. Plenty was on the line when the Bermuda Under-17 Women's National Football Team took to the pitch in Haiti for their CONCACAF Under-17 World Cup qualifier against Jamaica. At news time, the match should currently be in the second half, but Maurice Lowe, the Bermuda Football Association Technical Development Officer, turned his attention to today's match with so many things to think about. We, at this point, we have to look at all of the, the, the possibilities. So ideally, yeah, I would like to, 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 to win the match. We know that Jamaica still has to, to play Trinidad as well. So if we win the match, then you know we do everything that's within our power. You know that that should be sufficient to, to get us to the next round. However, you know a draw in in the match today still keeps us alive. Even a narrow loss, so Jamaica still needs to play Trinidad, and you know we run through all of the the possible scenarios in in today's match while recognizing that at this stage of the competition, there's no easy opponent. You know we we haven't beaten Jamaica at, at this level before, so there's a challenge in front of us while we're optimistic that we can do well in, in the match today versus Jamaica. Nakiwa Els completed his first game since returning from injury as Burnley drew 2-2 with Sheffield United in a behind-closed doors workout at Tough Moor. Wells assisted on the Burnley equaliser in the 88th minute and he will talk about his progress after his first game. Coming back into pre-season, I never expected to have an ankle issue after not having any problems for Lord knows how long, but then it came about I had to get the operation which you know I got my head around and understood that it could be you know eight to twelve weeks uh, until I'm really back and you know I'm, I'm on course to be back within that time period and you know I've, I've got my head around it and I'm, I, I know how close I am now to, to being where I need to be so I'm just trying to stay positive, work hard, train hard and get, get myself in tip top shape for um, when I get my chance. With that goal, Reggie Lamb gave Carlisle United a 1-0 lead, but a Paris Cowan Hall goal three minutes into injury time enabled Wickham to extend their unbeaten run to six games with a 3-3 draw. Lamb would score his second goal of the game in the 85th minute before Cowan Hall's late intervention in stoppage time. It was excitement at the WER Joe Tennis Stadium earlier today as play in the Bermuda ITF Junior Tennis Tournament resumed after a day and a half loss due to rain. President of the Bermuda Lawn Tennis Association, Michael Wolf, was happy that players could finally get back on court. Tennis is resumed after just one and a half days of rain. Um, the kids are excited to be back on the court, definitely. A lot of them have been sitting around waiting, anticipating the match getting on the way. So they're definitely happy to be back out on the court. Um, we're looking to complete the schedule uh, for today. Um, but again, it's going to go into the evening and um, hopefully we get everything done. We're asking for some uh, help from Mother Nature, so we'll see how it goes. 
the Bermuda Bowl Hockey League season is underway with four games played, producing a total of 39 goals. The season opener resulted in nine goals as the Montreal Canadiens defeated the Winnipeg Jets 6-3. The Montreal Canadiens got a hat-trick from Chris Coleman and single strikes from Bill Callock, Chris Allington, and Anthony Capsimalis. While the Winnipeg Jets got two goals off the stick of Jeremy Morash and a single strike from Matt Benson. In other matches, it was the Ottawa Senators defeating the Edmonton Oilers 5-2. Toronto Maple Leafs went down 8-4 to the Vancouver Canucks and the Calgary Flames went down 9-2 to the Winnipeg Jets. Gabriella Arnold finished on the podium representing Marion University on day one of the Midwest Collegiate Cycling Conference Regional Mountain Bike Championships in Indianapolis. Competing in the short track cross-country women's collegiate A division, Arnold finished third. She finished behind winner Hannah Finchamp from Lindenwood University and her teammate Emma Schwartz. I'm Earl Basden with Bermuda Broadcasting Sports. You can count on us. Fresh green beans, only $2.99 per pound. Fresh Purdue chicken thighs with drumsticks, only $2.39 per pound. Carolina rice, five-pound bag, only $6.29. All size boys and girls huggies pull-ups, only $15.99. Shockwide sweet, whole kernel, or cream style golden corn. 15.25 ounce tin, just 89 cents. All stores open Monday through Saturday, 7 a.m. until 10 p.m. and Sunday, 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. for your shopping convenience. I initially formulated a relationship with Friesenbrook Meyer back in the year 2000 when I acquired home insurance and I was very intrigued and impressed actually by the high level of customer service. Every person that I've dealt with and communicated with definitely know the products and services. Friesenbrook Meyer, covering possibilities. Well, last Thursday saw ZBN broadcast the Give from the Heart Telethon for Hurricane Relief in the Caribbean. Organized by the West Indian Association of Bermuda, it received pledges of more than $100,000 on the night. The four-and-a-half-hour show included some of the island's top musical talent and was hosted by our very own Gary Moreno and Power FM's Patrina Painter. Here's some of the highlights. <laughs> We come to you live from the Barclay Institute where we of course are hosting the West Indian Association Hurricane Relief Telethon. We are the world, we are the children, we are the ones to make a brighter day, so let's start giving. I went down after Hurricane Irma had hit, uh, but before Hurricane Maria hit. And, you know, in some bits of the BVI, 90% of homes destroyed. So you have to call in. The number to call is 295. 292. 292. Put it right. Oh, 292. Yes. 292 2820. 292 5820. Oh, I didn't come here to party. Oh, I didn't come here to stay. Oh, <laughs> I'm going to let people know that we don't really like each other, we just kind of tolerate That's why we're, I'm all the way over here and that's why you're hosting <laughs> from there. There's a check uh, for $5,000. So oh, that is very generous. The West right. Indian Association of Bermuda. So Great, thank you so much. Our pleasure. Once again, 295. 292. 292. 292. I, did it on, I did it on purpose. If we look at what I have right here. We need to go up to 10,000. 10,000, all right, that's, that's... There we go. It was terrifying. I mean, it looked like a bomb was dropped on our island and, you know, everything was gone. All the trees, there wasn't a leaf on a tree. The island looked brown from a distance and it was, it was, just, it was just scary, you know. You never thought it would happen to your own home. So we're just a bit over $20,000, so we're one-fifth of the way there. There was also a 10-year-old that a called ten year old. 10 years old, named Sienna Taylor. Big up Sienna, Sienna Taylor. Taylor, big up big Sienna up Taylor. Taylor. I'm going to give her a pop on. on. Three, 
two, one. One love, one heart. Let's get together and feel alright. Hear the children crying. One love. Hear the children crying. And let me put a little hustle on the acting premiere here. How much are you going to add to you? Well, actually, I've come with a donation. So now I'm talking. Now you're talking. From my family. Yes. Walter Raban, myself, Nadine Francis, and my daughter. daughter yes. Zawar Francis Raban are donating $100 to the cause. It has been so busy. It's been steady. It's been exciting. And it's so funny. I want you to sit down. So pleased to and give. all of a sudden, it was just like, ring, ring, ring. I'm and working. I couldn't even come and talk to you. I'm working. <laughs> We are now at $71,000. Yes, yes, you did that. You did that. We have a young lady who is five years old, and she is the daughter of Scott Pierman, and she is refusing, refusing to go to bed because we haven't said her name. And she has donated $50, all right? Anya, Anya Elishe. Please, Anya, do not get mad if Gary and I mess up your name. I got a knee when I got you and I. I look around me and see a sweet girl. Lost in the dark, but you're my flashlight. You're getting me, getting me through the dark. I wouldn't mind spending my time painting a starry night with you. Brushing yours in my hand turns all from bright to blind, and when we're done, we'll see something new. Now we have reached one hundred thousand dollars. And we would like to thank the West Indian Association for making this possible as well. Thank you so much. Of course, this has been the Caribbean Relief Hurricane Relief Campaign, and we want to thank everybody. And we leave you tonight with a big pom 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 pom. <laughs> you are crazy. What a heartwarming event. So just how much money was pledged to the West Indian Association of Bermuda and how much has actually now been received? WIA President Damian Brewster spoke with us this week. The actual pledge amount was, was roughly $105,000. On the night itself, we actually received $67,000 through card payments. And um, following our, our, our walk-in drive last week, Saturday, we actually netted a further $9,000 so that as of today's date we have seventy six thousand dollars but we are still urging those who have made pledges to please you can either make your payments directly to our bank account or um, this coming Saturday we are having our second open house where persons can actually walk down to the man to the to the Manchester Unity Hall and that's the corner of Union and is it Victoria Street? We will be there from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Therefore, anybody who wants to actually come in just to honor your pledge, we urge you to actually join us there. Bermuda Broadcasting televised the five-hour appeal last week, of course, and our CEO Patrick Singleton and producer Ian Rollins spoke about the program and what it meant to them and the channel. It was something that we want to give back to the community to show that we're thriving and we're moving forward. As 2017, it's been a year that we've been very busy. As you know, we had the America's Cup, and of course we had the election, and then this telethon that was held on the Thursday night staff regarding the broadcasting company put in five to six hours of volunteer time, and it was, was worth every penny of it. With that said, I'll let my CEO, Mr. Patrick Singleton, explain more about the telethon. Well, it was a real team effort, wasn't it? Correct. Yeah, so I, I think the most important part is that um, you know, we were able to help people in the Caribbean in the affected areas, and, and that's the most important element, that we are the local broadcaster, that we were able to connect Bermuda to the, uh, to the events that took place uh, down there, and uh, you know, we were thrilled to be able to help the West Indian Association raise over a hundred thousand dollars in pledges. That's correct. So yeah, it was a good effort, uh, a great effort by all of us. And I think the message that it sends is that Bermuda and Bermudians can do really great things when we all work together. 
And as we've already heard, if you've made a pledge to the telethon and haven't paid yet, don't worry. The West Indian Association will be available this Saturday to receive your cash and check donations at the Manchester Unity Hall on the corner of Union and Victoria Streets in Hamilton. The hours for that have now been extended. The hall will be open from 11.15 a.m. to 3 p.m. And more news to celebrate. Our Earl Basin telling us Bermuda has advanced to the final stage of the group after defeating Jamaica 3-2 in Haiti. Again, Earl Basin will have a full report in the morning. Congratulations, Bermuda. I'm Jasmine Patterson. Thanks for watching. Good night. Jasmine Patterson's wardrobe and makeup is provided by Gibbons Company.